If you know some teams of Romania, then you definitely know those two. They have been already in a couple of tournaments, some of them more or less successful, and they also had here and there some roster changes. They both work really hard to get also in the international scene. We had the honor to cast them quite often already. May it be Gigabyte, Join Dota League, Star Ladder, like those teams, we are quite familiar with them. And now, of course, here on the Comic Con, we also had the honor to meet those guys. It's pretty amazing and so pretty fun so far like for all those people tuning in who have no idea what the comic con is well the comic con is the the comic pretty much convention and you have a lot of different things here of course you have all the cosplay you have all the games like for example league of legends Dota 2 you have csgo hearthstone everything is being played here but it, they also have like a huge area like a separate hall just for card games warhammer and all that stuff it's a huge event like every day there's like hundreds of people like roaming around through here and of course we as Dota casters we are also pretty much happy that uh, yeah Dota 2 found a way into also the Romanian scene not just with the teams also here on the Comic Con and with our effort here to even bring this broadcast live in the world in English of course we try to boost the scene a bit so therefore thanks for like all the organization, Balkan Bears especially, and of course also the nice guys from TCN Next, please. Anyway, the draft is pretty much on, and before I go, like a small shout out, of course, uh, also thank you for Make-A-Wish Foundation from the United Emirates. Like, they also help a lot here, uh, making this all possible. So, let's hop into the draft, I'd say. Coucher, your microphone or your new headset, it's being tested right now now. Well, I'm hoping it's fine. If you can hear me fine, then it should be okay. Is it? Yeah, like definitely. I don't have any background stuff again on you, so it's it's definitely better. Well, improvement <laughs> nonetheless for sure. But TCN, they start out with a dark share of all the picks. I mean, the Invoker was still in the pool. Completely don't care about that hero. They're going for the dark share, and TCN actually, they do like to run team fight heavy compositions, like we saw from yesterday as well. And dark share definitely fits the role for that. Whereas next, please, just. 100% standard District 12 uh, Rubik. Just every single game almost. I think the games are guys from the 90% of the time. District 12 plays the Rubik. And TCN now grabbing the GM Protector. Just such an annoying hero to play up against. Especially like the Mirana is a carry role. Doesn't actually do that much damage to towers. So the GM Protector's living armor is going to be really good for that. Yep, absolutely. Like, we actually saw quite a lot of Dream Protector out as of late, not just here on the Comic Con, also, of course, in all the other games, all the leaks we cast on the Half the TV and all of our four channels. But yeah, even here on the Comic Con, Dream Protector being very, very popular. A lot of teams picked him up, and so far he has been successful. He has been protecting the towers uh, quite a lot. So the other team was always slow down, or towers that haven't been pretty much finished. They got healed up again, and as well as, of course, heroes being protected sometimes we already call a kill but then they get a living armor comes out in the last second and just saving their sweet little butts so yep living armor to be honest here on the comic con one of the the most amazing things coming out of, especially when it comes to timing now the second ban rotation is on the way and they already decided to go for a timber and a amber amber spirit here yeah, banning out the timber makes me think that DCM probably wants to grab at least a few more strength heroes from themselves or maybe just go for some push because the timber, so it's extremely good against push and of course against strength heroes because it scales with the 15% uh, main stat reduction which for strength heroes makes them a bit more squishy and the secondary ban being the ancient apparition so I mean DCM, they want to team fight heavily themselves but they don't want to face team fights that much Yep Absolutely, and uh, yeah, it's it's al always nice if you guys give us feedback. As I said, this is a LAN event. It always means a lot of compromise, a, a lot of forth and back with the, uh, you know, with our technical stuff. We brought a lot of uh, our own hardware and the rest we had to somehow implement in our casting set here. So also thanks, of course, there again to Balkan Bears, the organizers here from the Comic Con, as well as Lucky Tish, uh, a sponsor here, also providing headsets and stuff. We had some sound issues yesterday and today in the early games. Now a new headset. I just hope it works if it doesn't or if it's too loud to quite whatsoever then please just type in chat and we try to fix it ASAP even on the go but yeah they finished up the second ban rotation and also they take quite some time here next please I actually had the honor yesterday to draft with them for them unfortunately they lost their game not here on the Comic Con but another league but it was pretty funny I, I kind of felt bad like me as a caster uh, drafting and then they lose the game. The second ban rotation was through Ancient Apparition was picked. The Viper. So they would just draft and then remake it. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah. Yep. Oh, we just got news from someone. Yep. They will finish this draft and then they will remake because they have some issue on the main stage. So, but this should not be a great delay. Anyway, Ancient Aberration is coming out. Wiper uh, as well. And then next gaming, uh, next please gaming here. They decide to go for the Tight Hunter. We saw one Tight Hunter yesterday already. He even got a uh, refresher orb out at like 30 minute mark, I think that was. And pretty amazing to see because like usually what we cast we barely see any tight hunters now with the anchor smash being buffed 60 percent damage reduction we see him quite often and of course the ravage is always fun to cast a huge AO A aoe spell aoe stun as well doing quite some damage and if the refresher comes out like there's no other solution for the other team than just going for bkb yeah the tight hunter is really strong because with the 60 percent reduction like you were talking about they actually go farm the Ancients with it, because they take literally no damage almost from them. So that's some just extra source of income, but TCN, they pick up the Invoker as the third pick. Like, that's unheard of. It didn't get picked or banned with the 10 or so previous options at least. But of course Invoker is really good with the Darkshare if he goes for the Exor, just massive Chaos Meteor into Vacuum with the Defang Blast on top. It can just wreck teams. But that's also why the Tide Hunter is so good, because the Kraken Shell, even if he gets disabled or anything, he will break free of it and he can still get at least a Ravage off. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, yesterday I was so surprised because that Tide Hunter was so farmed, he stacked up like a triple stack of Ancients and then he was just farming. Since the Anchor Smash is actually also going on the Ancients, I mean, usually Ancients magic immune, but it doesn't count as magic, at least the debuff does not. So he was really standing there and the Ancients, like Kraken Shell and the combination of Anchor Smash, the Ancients did like zero damage to them. Absolutely zero. It was just amazing to watch a Titan understanding they are losing not a single HP against a triple stack of Ancients, just melee them. So it took a while till he got them down, of course. The right click is relatively high. I mean, the base damage at least. But, of course, just a single target and then down. It was, it was fun to watch, but he got a lot of farm there. So, either way, the fourth ban is coming out now. They actually, like... Next, please, especially, I saw them yesterday drafting, like, they really put a team effort. I wish we had a live cam uh, that I could turn around now, but, like, those guys really sitting together there, they're talking over Skype, they really consider each and every ban. Like, I, with my left eye, I can actually see even the captain's mode screen here and how they uh, go forth and back. So, it's, I can actually predict <laughs> a bit more because they mouse over here and there, sometimes a hero where I'm like, yeah, yeah, that, that looks good, that, that could be picked next. But the fact is, Sand King is coming out, that means we have, of course, already the Rubik Mirana synergy that means the arrow and telekinesis working very nicely together the same with the ravage like you can also land a secondary stun of course after the ravage plus of course the gush is helping slowing heroes down make it easier to hit an arrow and of course the barrel strike on top of that so uh, there's a lot of synergy with the Mirana but of course Mirana she needs to transition into a lot of right click when it comes later game especially now that we see a lifestealer on the other side so lifestealer I don't know in in the Dota scene at all lifestealer becoming more and more unpopular i have to say but i'm waiting still for that day when he comes a bit more back because i still think he's a strong hero not just not just because of the rage and the infest just because i don't know i like the hero but of course rave king for example is is such a thing where lifestealer lost a lot of tribute to i guess well, well the lifestealer has really fallen out of favor i mean it's almost he's like extinct but he's really strong, I mean, against the next place lineup, which at least up until the mid game before Mirana gets like two to three big items, they're mostly magic damage and the rage definitely will help in that regard. I'm just hoping he won't get stunned up before he gets the rage off, because if he does, he might just get stun locked so easily with the burrow strike, the ravage and arrows and whatnot, like everything flying at them. And of course, life stealer usually has some issues with actually staying on the targets as well, especially like Mirana leaps out of it. But yep. now they have the dark share to search up the life stealer, so he can just follow them. Yeah, that's pretty much the biggest problem. Uh, life stealers that uh, are kited. Actually, we saw one life stealer here on the Comic Con, I think, in the last day, and he played the full race car build. That means we had early face boots coming out, the the stats giver, and of course uh, movement speed giver that as well coming out the drums. And then on top of it, he went for the Sangha Yasha. So that's pretty much the maximum you can or should get. And it's, it's always nice to watch a life stealer who is so speedy. It makes his life at least a bit easier. Now the fifth bands are coming out. It's a DK and it is a Disruptor. Well, the Disruptor actually, I kind of like it banned when it is against the Mirana. Then again, 
you usually see him when there's hero, you, you definitely need to silence, like the Ember, like the Storm, where you can use the static, static Storm, Kinetic Field, etc. Here, it's pretty interesting to see that they still pick it. But I guess, like, for example, if he's really fast in reaction, which we saw also the last days, like against the Titan, the Sand King, Mirana leaping away, Static Storm would also be crucial. And now it really gets interesting. We have a Beastmaster and a Puck uh, coming out to round up this whole thing. And now, yep, I'm going to show you the entire screen because they will remake that match pretty fast. So we should leave this one and the next one will be up in just a second. And yes, there we go. So, I'm gonna show you the lobby again, so you also see our uh, pretty faces. There we go. We are casting here on the Comic Con. I wish I could actually... Oh, wait. I can actually turn around a bit with the camera. There's the main stage. We're sitting here on the side. This is next, please, on this side, sitting. There's the crowd just also filling up. But yeah, I, unfortunately, I can't turn the camera even further. So, you have to live with our faces for now. <laughs> but well, so far, nine people are in there. And yeah, this is definitely going to be interesting. When did we cast the last time a Beastmaster? This is... I don't know. I have no clue at all. I mean, I think we've seen only one or two Beastmasters, maybe. I think we saw one picked up against a Lifestealer as well, just like in this game. But yep. I mean... It, I love that hero, to be honest. Just the scouting potential with the Hawk. And now, with the changes to the Beastmaster, you can actually summon them separately. That he doesn't actually have to summon both of them together. So it helps out a little bit as well, and the inner beast aura, it's actually pretty damn nice for pushing as well with the extra attack speed. Absolutely. The amazing part about uh, Beastmaster is really how, yeah, pretty much the timing. It's, it's all those, every stun that goes, I don't know, how can I describe it? It's, it's the same you see with Centaur. Like the best Centaur plays are always those where you get like multiple hoof stumps, multiple... Uh, double edges in and for the beast model it's pretty much the same of course with the only difference is that his ultimate it doesn't care about bkb or immunity like uh like rage it's just going through and that's why i absolutely like it against the lifestealer i guess it's a smart pick plus of course what we also forgot to mention is like beastmaster one of the best heroes when it's about map control we see sometimes beastmaster in lower tier games or in, in fun games of higher tier players, we see them in combination with a Tinker for example, because the bird uh, can be used as like a TP platform and everything. It's <laughs> what? It's damn sick man. Yeah it is. Okay, it's like with the Visage Familiars, the Tinker just being all around the map. But to be honest, I mean TCN, with the last pick of the puck, it fits with their like team fight, team fight heavy lineup. And the Disruptor of course got banned out, but does this, does this mean that the Dark is going to be a support one? It, it has to be. By the way, I also like totally forgot something. Like, you know what's the worst part is? When your bird actually gets spotted out and the lifesteal is infesting in it and you somehow, I don't know, move it in, in a position where there's like heroes of your team and then suddenly out of the hawk there is a lifestealer popping out. This would like worst case scenario. Like this would be the ultimate troll to happen. But either way, the teams are in. The game is about to start. I hope we don't have any uh, pauses so far. Also, the crowd is gathering. We're almost full here on the main stage. And now we go for a team introduction. TCN Lion here. He's playing the puck. Then for the mid, we're gonna see Arise. Of course, this is no surprise whatsoever. Arise, a very decent uh, mid player. Then here, come with me on the dark seer. Also, very nice guy. Talked with him yesterday. Sizo, of course, playing. Pretty much, I don't know how often I cast a Sisu on the Train Protector. It's like, I don't even know if he can play another hero. So we have Sisu on the Train Protector and Freezer playing the Life Stealer. But at the same time, we see here a five man smoke coming out by next place. They really try already something. But the question is, do they find something? They see Leon, they will get the Burrow Strike on him. It might be enough. There's the guy. So that's oh. a oh my god. This was absolutely overkill. Like, poor Puck just running into his demise there. So yeah, nice start for next please. They get the first blood on the puck. Of course, it's it's not a huge setback. Of course, puck is immediately back and getting that experience. Also, the experience has been shared among pretty much five people. So it's not enough to get like a significant advantage. But of course, gold buys the gold on the first blood, like even uh, buffed in 6.8. It's yeah, this is really significant. So as it looks, we're gonna see. Is that a beastmaster mid? Yeah, it's a beastmaster mid. Yep, this is. I think I saw that the last time somewhat. 
September, October 2013. So next please, here in 6.81, no new experiments, they go back to the roots pretty much. Yeah, it's, well, just do what you like and what you know that is successful. And yet the biggest thing I think is that the tight Hunter got the first blood because he's in a 1v1 lane up against a puck now and the puck of course died. I mean the XP like you said it's not all that significant if it gets spread out by 5 people. But now I mean Shinoji, he has the early boots already so once he gets level 2 with the anchor smash he, he can start going aggressive. But on this bottom lane freezer, I mean this aggressive tri lane sure it's hard to bring them down when 3 is there with the leech hit. Getting some heal from there and of course the living armor but still Mirana, the Sand King as well as Rubik, it's as a dual lane for Freezer and Ciso, I, I don't think it will be too successful. They have to do some rotations. Yeah, the, the biggest problem the biggest problem is here, Freezer won't get any farm, as well as Ciso here not getting any harassment. Usually we see we see a train protector coming out with the leech seed and then getting the right clicks into supports, for example, and with the high base damage on the train protector, this really hurts. It's sometimes like a third of the HP of a support. But like in this lane, he definitely can't move forward. He would just die. We have here Illusionist playing uh, the Sand King. So Burrow Strike would come instant there, followed up red light with an arrow. And if they even want it, there is telekinesis. So this is definitely not working. He just can't go for the rest and therefore I think he's gonna stack something in the jungle. We already see the darks here on here come with me doing it. Yeah, the TCN definitely went for like super weird laning. Uh, I don't know what they were expecting from this spot online to be honest. Maybe they were expecting an aggressive tri lane to come out and well the tree and lifestyle would have been really good against the tight hunter of course. But since then it didn't happen. They have to switch around. They're losing precious farm time with it. And actually there was a rotation as well by Ciso into the mid lane to try to catch Kiano off guard, but Kiano saw it with his own tower vision and actually ran towards the top rune, so he was safe from that as well. And next please so far, I mean, Leon at least is getting farm on the puck, but Freezer is now coming in and Leon has to waste gold as well as mana on the TP to go towards the bottom lane, if that is where he's going at all. Yep, absolutely. And Kiano, like, I watched him yesterday play in, in another league here in the free-to-play uh, pro gaming area. And he's so focused, like, you should see him playing mid. It's, it's just amazing. Like, he doesn't hear and see anything around it. He's so focused on the mid. And I guess that's what a mid player needs. I mean, this is, you can't miss anything in the mid. You have to keep up, especially here. I mean, he's against the Invoker, also a rise, very good mid player. So he has to really do the best to prevail and get fastest level six. But yeah, I was really impressed by his play. Very focused, also a nice, nice handling on the keyboard. But now, this dry lane and freezer, this is a, I don't know, it's a disaster. But they rotated the puck in and Freezer is now in the safe lane. So this is the rotation we've been waiting for. It came out a bit late in my opinion. They should have done that right away when they saw this try lane. Yeah, it really does hurt them. I mean, it's not the end of the world by any means because Freezer now at least will be starting to get some farm at least. Especially with the pulls going on by Ciso. And of course Ciso himself needs some levels, almost level 3, but oh... Looks like next please, they're tired of waiting, they want to kill Leon and they want to do it now, the creep is tanking in the tower, he uses the oh. illusion orb as well, oh, this is, might be the worst possible moment for him, the illusion orb on cooldown, he has to phase shift, and oh, actually backs himself into a nice corner as well, so really nicely done by Leon. Yep, that was really dangerous. So Red Light is going to get one tower hit here and yeah, the puck is back. But I really thought by the second he's using, oh, here in the mid, actually Keanu getting quite some damage now. The Tornado is coming out as well. He's using his bottle, got one more charge, but damn that, he's so fast. One more hit, oh, but is oh it enough? <laughs> now there's the Perosex turner, double damage on District 12 and Keanu himself with the level 3 wild action. Oh, and top, they follow here on Synergy. The question is, do they have another slow? No, they don't. There's like 20 mana missing, but the Iron Shell and the Surge now, the self is getting interrupted. But I don't think this is enough, like especially now with the damage reduction on Freezer. That would have been nice, of course, getting the kill on uh, on the Titanter, but in the end, it doesn't work out. So, the Invoker, I don't know, a bit unlucky, I guess, with the nice bottle use in between. Keanu stayed alive and in the end they just get the counter kill. Yeah, that was so clutch. I mean, I really thought he's gonna go down, but of course Invoker couldn't follow up because he lost vision once Beastmaster actually ran to the high ground. And it was... Bottom lane, oh, there's... They get the kill, the arrow actually is here. One second, but there's the leaving armor stars, there a few more right clicks. And they do get the kill in the end. District 12, the last track, but red light, oh my god, 8 HP. 8 goddamn HP, and oh my god, the arrow missing there. That was of course a bit bad timing there, but... 
he had to do a right step. I mean, he had to do a step to the right because there was still a creep like in front of him. So he needed like, yeah, that split second more to actually get the arrow flying. But in the end, they didn't even need the arrow with the double take of the Star Storm. That was just fine. So next at the moment, 3-0. Yesterday, TCM, we saw them so dominant and disciplined. So I wonder when they strike back. It's just a matter of time. Like so far, it looks pretty decent. Also, the CS wise here on the lanes, now that we saw the rotations, it's pretty equal in all of the lanes. So at some point, TCN will say, like, hey guys, it's time to find our pickoffs. And that will be, for example, Tide Hunter, level 5. He's about to hit level 6. We have Sisu. Well, okay, he's not getting too much at the moment as a rotating support. But Invoker, level 6, there's a lot of coming out, as well as Leon already being level 6. So they have all the things they need to get into big fights and maybe we already see another initiative here by next there is a double smoke they're gonna find a haste run as well this is of course best case scenario unless it's seen and to be honest it is seen those two wards they definitely spotted this out there is yeah no actually so far no blinks by tcn oh they're gonna find come with me oh, oh nice backing off though just in the nick of time, he was just about to run into the high ground, and I think that would have been the death of him, but of course, Haystrom is still active, and Keanu, I mean, they might want to die Freezer, he's level 5, and actually he's gonna go down super fast if he gets hit by the Primal Roar, and to be honest, on Keanu, he has a staff of Wizardy, do you think he's just gonna rush out the Necro book? I guess so, yes, I guess so, like the, the, oh my god. We missed that kill on Puck, but yeah, I can tell you exactly what it was. This was Telekinesis and Fate Ball in Synergy with the Star Storm and of course the Sacred Arrow coming out. So yeah, pretty nice done. This is a full Sierra now and the Puck, yeah, as well as Freezer there, absolutely not happy. And now Freezer actually being quite low HP. Unfortunately, the two supports were rated, rotated earlier in. They're already gone. Now a Primal Ore after... Like the infest also used, that would have been the perfect timing. Then the only the rage would have been like his only chance of survival. But they are back in the mid, but so is Sisu. So he has to protect Arise for sure there. He certainly does. Tishen, they can't afford to give away any more kills than they already have. Sure, they're lasted twice, they're just still keeping the farm up and are on par with next please and even a little bit ahead. But they're just losing the XP, especially as Illusionist. He has a few stacks to maybe farm up as well a little bit later on to get the earlier blink dagger. And actually, you know, he himself is farming at the moment, hasn't picked up anything else yet. And well, so far next please, I don't feel like they are in a hurry to go anywhere. Yeah, I, I kind of just feel for come with me here, look at this, one golem camp. And look at this here, there's a second golem camp for a Darks here, who is coming in and out of the jungle, trying to fi find something with the Iron Shell, or farm at least something up with the Iron Shell. This is like worst case scenario, it's the same when you see Batriders farm in the jungle and then suddenly... Oh, there's a Telekinesis oh, bottom! Oh, what a play, he gets the spaceship though, there's the Dream Girl as well, they're turning around to silence with their Tornado EMP arise, finally making his appearance. Nice illusion of our playtistic well, but the right clicks will be enough. Moonlight Shadow with just a tad too late. But what a play by the Rubik using the stolen illusory orb, then getting the telekinesis and well the phase shift. That was so clutch by Bakyaro, just nearly dodged. Yeah, that was that is exactly what I've been also talking about in the earlier game. That tiny bit of luck. I mean the Moonlight Shadow I like level one, the fate time, etc. It was just enough to actually disjoint the last projector coming in there from either the invoker or the puck like under normal circumstances without the moon eye shadow he would have been dead there but like perfect timing so a bit luck is always involved and now yep the whole thing first initiation goes without the result puck just face shifting out and well the dream coin everything also goes pretty much into the nirvana nothing in the end so right now it's i don't know i think both teams have Let's say mutual respect, especially TCN, they're still not, I don't know, on the hunt for something. Even though, I mean, this time the puck, the Jivka sort of got baited out there. But it has to come at some point. Come with me at the moment. What is he going for? We see, oh, he's called full-time greedy. We're going to see a hand of Midas on that Darks here. That's what he has been doing in the jungle all the time. Midas Darks here. Jesus. Yeah. I don't like the item on that hero at all. I've seen so many Midas Darkseers just fail because they went for the Titan. I mean, for him it wasn't that bad. Like, at 10 minutes, well, the use is delayed at the moment because he's just sitting in the base with it. But still, it's... I mean, levels, 
are something that the Darkseer needs, but should you look for them with the Midas, I mean, I don't know, it may or may not pay off. I personally don't like for mid lane tornado EMP up with illusion with the cold snap. He burrow strikes up onto the high ground though. Yeah, very nice burrow strike there. So he even doesn't get it, but now he hits up the ravage. Teaser. Oh my god, that setup district 12 using the illusion once again to its full extent. And like district 12 Rubik, why are teams giving him that hero? Well, it's it's a good question, <laughs> but no, it was beautifully done. Also, the timing so that the rage couldn't come out. The rage would have been like level four now. Infest would also have been ready. That means they needed to kill him. They need to perfectly channel like telekinesis into that ravage, and they did so. Now Moonlight Shadow is coming out. Only problem is in the mid there is a Sentry Ward. It's about to run out, but it's still enough to see exactly what's happening. So this might be. This might be huge because TCN, they know approximately where the enemy heroes are. If they gather, they get follow-up kills and this is really, really bad. And now, oh my god, that range creep, the range creep saw them and now they're stuck in there. Oh, right, there's the tornado, EMP Lugia is almost taken out immediately. The size of the dream point misses all, but Keanu, he's gonna get taken out nevertheless. Freezer even rages in, comes in for the rescue of sorts, but at least one kill. They really, 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 really were hoping for more. That range creep though. What the yeah. hell is he doing there? That range creep was, was definitely best player so far. Now we have here, oh nice, we have a telekinesis on Sisu, but he has level 1 nature skies. Now the question is, do they have vision? Yes, they have. Oh, yeah. There is the sentry board. They came prepared and no chance for him. And Synergy, 3, 0 and 0. And actually, in 50 gold, already has his mech 12 minutes in with the arcane boots. Sure, he won't have the blink of Oh, he's TPing mid lane, he doesn't have the ravage, but they want to defend the tower or at least deny it. And actually it's not even in the nine range yet, so the clip maybe should have waited like one or two seconds with it. Or of course if they just want to keep it completely alive then that's a whole different matter. Yeah, to be honest, rotating is really important for both teams of course. Like of course for the Dire team, TCN here, it's so important that they don't lose the towers because they have the living armor, it's being healed up those towers. That's why now it comes to pressure in the mid, you have to commit fully to a tower to get it down, otherwise you, 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 you just... Yeah, you just don't get through it, that's the problem. If you leave that tower, it will be healed up. And this is the worst case scenario now. There is a cliff coming out, but it doesn't look like DCN wants to go full. So this tier one will eventually oh, go down. Oh, they get the burrow strike up onto Leon though, as well as Ciso. Uh, too bad that he didn't have follow up. But now Leon, he wants to go aggressive. He has the Dream Quill as well as DP. Just to kill, he gets tornado the EMP under them. Complete out of mana synergy though. Up onto Leon with the Star Storm to finish him up. The Dream Coil was pretty damn nice on the three heroes, but TCN, they were in no position at all to take that fight. Yep, absolutely. Now here, Freezer is already working on a tier 1 tower as well as some creeps. It's going down like just 300 HP. Also, the mid tower is pretty low. This, yeah, this will be pretty much the next priority for TCN. They need the tower gold badly. By the way, I just see the boar here. L look at the boar. It looks actually quite funny. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bottom lane, they do kill off one, but where the hell is the boar actually? But I didn't even see that kill coming there on Ciso. Like, that must have been a long arrow, but now oh, top here. Top lane, open wounds, a few Rikers Freezer does so much damage. EMP, it was District 12 himself, but it just get taken out. And Lifestealer, I mean, he's level 9 already, face boots. He doesn't need much more damage to take down a Rubik. Yep, and now there is Moonlight Shadow up. Freezer has no mana whatsoever and this might be his demise. There's also no infest left and there the epicenter is finishing off the whole thing. So yeah, they got the revenge for Rubik and with Rubik you actually see or saw rather why I like the, the life stealer so much. With that rage level 4, there's nothing you can do as support unless you have like 4 staffs or any means of disabling a raged life stealer. So yeah, in this case they didn't have anything but now here, oh my god, they want to go bottom. Oh, what a silence to stopping the primary order for coming out and now Keanu tornado the EMP up he will fall down before he gets his ultimate tornado got stolen arrow will miss by red light though no mana for the star stone but the right clicks might be enough and Ciso takes a fall he wants to go for more the red light oh this is with the telekinesis arise he's dropping low they need the fade but it's on cooldown it's gonna come off it's not enough though by the looks of it and now DPS is by TCN as well 
but that's just a TP like, hey, stay off our tower, we have to defend it. Yeah, it, it, this was really unfortunate. Red Light there, he was in pursuit, but Arrow was on cooldown. Also the Star Storm, like actually the Star Storm was like two seconds. He didn't need much more, so he would have gotten the kill on the Invoker, but in the end. By the way, for all those viewers who ask, what's that background noise? We are here directly on the LAN event on the main stage, Comic Con Bucharest 2014, and those guys shouting is either the crowd or the Romanian commentators, or another stage, may it be CSGO or LOL. Either way, there's a fight here oh, yeah, going. Oh yeah, the first primary run to Freezer, he's just locked down in the rage, can't do anything. He's somehow still alive, trying to life steal, but oh, Epicenter's not there. Back you wall onto Freedom, but Leon still falling down. They don't have enough follow-up, finally a rise comes in. Tornado, EMP onto multiple heroes, they use the overgrowth onto Free as well, Red Light. He gets taken out, they will go for Illusionist next. Or Synergy actually, he's the one left behind the wall, just expires but the Leech in Easter Synergy Out of mana, the last Anchor Smash, that's all he had in him The Wild Axe is flying around as well, Illusory or will TCN actually go for it? That like was it. so close, Leon there trying to be part of it, the Dreamcoy would have been ready there But the Axe is flying here by Keanu, that was so close Le These Axes are actually on level 4 and yeah, Puck actually survived this, I don't know, with like 50 or 60 HP or something Really, really close I'm so surprised that this fight here in the bottom lane actually ended up in just a 2 for 2 trade I mean, Lifestealer managed to get out with the Infest of course there but. I don't know, in the end, still a better trade for next because first of all, they have already the advantage and they got a tower down. With the tower down, as I said, I emphasize it always, as usual, the Dream Protector, you need to get towers down ASAP. Otherwise, yeah, if you don't commit, they will be healed up and you have to go all the way again and then dive maybe in something you don't want to see. Yeah, that definitely is the case with the Dream Protector. You just have to get those towers and so far, next piece, they've been pretty successful with it as well. Sure, the top tier, Tower is getting healed up, but looks like next, please. That might be their next target because Red Light as well as District 12, they're grouping up top lane already. And Red Light, he has some pretty damn nice farm to be honest on the Mirana. Yeah, absolutely. And that being said, you talk already about the farm, and there we go. Look at this roller coaster up and down. Nice exchange of kills here, but in the end, 750 experience advantage here for next CC. But in the mid, they want to fight mid. They have the primal roar, Freezer used it, oh he gets it long range, do they have the follow-up stun, this is 12 is there, there's the burrow stun, just as the rage engine, telekinesis as well, and Freezer, he goes down, I think they want to go for more synergy, has the blink dagger ready on the tide hunter, illusion is really close to his, doesn't have it quite yet, and next please, just 5 man rotation towards the top. Yep, at the moment, next please is on fire, also very nice that arrow flying directly on top of it, I mean he was already CC'd, down, Pretty much to his stuff, but like the, the creeps being cleared out by the star storm, and now we have maybe a reaction of come with me. He searches up, but he can't really go over there, and of course, he's boxed in. There's the synergy. Oh, what the the arrow, the arrow hitting there, the life. Oh, look at the living armor actually buying some time there, but in the end, they got the creep wave. This is a complete creep wave, and yep, synergy can even tank that tower. He doesn't care. Like, he has Kraken Shell now, level 1, he has the mech, which he also used. So, now, Cliff coming out for TCN, they want to trade, they want to trade this tier 1 tower. The question is, Cliff is there, it's also getting used now, and there's the rotation. Ruby coming in, Mirana coming in, but directly into oh, AMP. There's the overgrowth as well, but Red Light, he DPs in a little bit later, and he's out of mana, arrow in the face, or in the back, rather. And Red Light, he has the leap available if he wants to go for a rise, and smartly decides not to, but Sand King with the tower kill on top. He now has his own blink dagger, and they're on the hunt together with Synergy. Two blink daggers, and even a <laughs> Beastmaster just to help out. Oh, they see the TP, come with me. I think he's gonna die for sure. He uses the vacuum as well. Epicenter coming out. Oh, Burrow's like, they don't even need the ram. Poor Duxy. He just came back. He pretty much said hello to the fountain, went out of his base, dying again. So if you take all this and count, you do simple math. It was a tower trade, one for one. Arise got this one kill. But they got twice the darks here, so again, next please at the moment, just trading better. And I tried to finish my gold craft now because it seems to be a bit quiet, at least for a second. And look at this, next actually had a decent gold lead. We were at 3,000 and even though they trade better, they lost like 2,000 of their gold. I guess part of it is for some the darks here having a Midas. And well, let's see what we see now here. Li Lion here, infest, hmm. But if he goes, he's gonna find three or four heroes, and you don't want to really end up against this because if there is Beastmaster somehow in that stack, you're gonna jump in. There will be instant lint. This 
nice ultimate primal roar and Freezer will be the one being focused down so this is something you just don't want to go for it yeah the Beastmaster so far has worked out wonders for next please because he's been locking down the life stealer pretty much every single fight when he rages and actually that's pretty crucial as well to get it during the duration of the rage because then the rage will just end after the primal roar and they can lock him down with normal CC uh, well, at the moment, both teams, they're just content farming up, although the Moonlight Shadow is there, I have no idea to what the veil or what the reasoning behind it was. But yeah. I don't know, it, it, there's no apparent reason, at least I can see him now, maybe here, Arise, oh yeah. Their illusionist, he definitely, yep, he noticed that, and now, oh my god, that tornado is actually interrupting the TP, oh, now he's stuck what? at the Ancients. There's the Orchid as well, he got that so fast, the rise, he's been farming up, I have no idea where he actually got it from. Yeah, yep. that's the 4 staff Orchid and face boots, wow. But what a reaction there, he he like assumed he was just, you know, going burst strike uphill there and TPing instantly and that tornado. Top lane, Freezer is in trouble, he has to infest out and actually chooses the nice creep as well for it. They had Beastmaster TPing in and Synergy of course didn't want to blow the Ravage into the rage. Oh, that poor Lifestealer, look at it, he has to come out now. They use the primal roar for it as well with the leap, star storm, Ciso came in, there's the ravage just in case, it actually doesn't connect on Ciso. They will be able to chase him down there, that's all with their eyes, nice tornado EMP, up onto two here of the EU, oh Ciso just TP's out in front of them. Yep, that was pretty nice play, but then again, Freezer, the one who is supposed to carry this game is just dying too often, that's the problem, like net worth wise, he's... I know, behind even the Darks here, behind the Titan, uh, it's just not working out. They really need to babysit him more. He needs to get that farm up ASAP. He is going as it seems. Yep, this is Drum's stats giver. The face was already out, but we don't see directly Sangayasha rush. We see the armlet coming out. I guess maybe Sangayasha directly after, unless they feel like they need a bash, for example. Here in the mid, we have a two-man. Oh, that's actually interesting. A two-man smoke coming out. He's not using the ghost walk to actually scout forth and back. But the question is, do they find something? And if they find something, is it alone? It might be illusionist. And this is well, they should be able to get on. Oh my god! Tornado EMP. He might get the burst rock out. Definitely plus as well. The sandstorm We're giving some. Oh, he actually is alive. There's the moonlight shadows, of course. Uh, I think a rise. He should have started with the orchid. Yep, I think the Orchid was better, but even then, they had no vision whatsoever. Sisu actually not carrying dust or sentries, so the Moonlight Shadow might have still be enough. Yeah, it's really nice, and you have to come prepared against Mirana, but oh, Arise is... He sees red light. Will he go for it, though? He's waiting for Sisu as well for the overgrowth by the looks of it. The Leech it. There, there's the overgrowth with the silence. The right clicks are coming in. The Cold Snap actually not invoked to red light. He's healthy. He's alive. Synergy comes in into the tornado. He doesn't have the Ravage, but Sisu, he will go down nevertheless. The Pharaoh's like, and they have sent to stay are prepared. And now Leon, he has to blink away and does so as well. Yeah, that's really too bad, but Illusionist maybe trying to find something. No, but Burst Strike was anyway on cooldown, but it's really too bad. I mean, Erase, it was all a good play. The problem is the right click, just not enough. The Mirana had 80 HP after the Orchid actually ticked there. So, pretty unfortunate. Next, just building up more and more advantage here when you look at the kill board. But then again, I already showed it. Look at the gold. Like, regardless of that kill board, I know it's sometimes misleading. It's 18 and 7. You should think next has like an insane advantage. But the fact is, TCN is doing fine when it comes to gold. And if Freezer gets pretty much his farm on the Lifestealer up, they're in a very good shape to fight at any point, regardless of how it stands with the kills. Yeah, TCN, they actually run kind of a four-quarter lineup, more or less, because they only have one support, really, the Tree and Protector. The Darkshare actually has a lot of farm, and I guess it's partially thanks to the Midas. So in this game, definitely working out for him. He already has a mech and a Blink Tiger on top of it. And he's level 13, so maxed out vacuum, level 2 wall as well. If they get it into the Overgrowth, followed by Defang Flash, Chaos, Meteor. I mean, sure, next place they have the mech. Oh, Illusionist, look at this. Instant Orchid, instant EMP, but he blinks out. But the question is now, Moonlight Shadow, do they have vision? No vision and burst strike on the high crown. So very well done there. He's escaping again. So nice reaction there by him. But here we see Moonlight Shadow being used. Sisu, did they notice this block? Doesn't seem like it. Actually, the access came out. He wanted to get rid of that tree just in case he is around there using the nature skies. Now, do they find him? 
Sizo is so close to the sentry range at the moment, he's just out of it. Oh god, Sizo living on the edge there. Well, he is scouting now a mid lane. There's the vacuum all red and drops so low. The pink flash catches Illusionist as well. He's gonna take a fall. That's what we've been waiting for. But now Sizo coming in. There's the Necro and Freezer. They see him. Freezer going in onto Twisted 12. Nice telekinesis. And Freezer completely out of mana ravage up onto 4. Hero seriously blinks in to the anchor smash as well. 2 down for Tizian. They're gonna go for more Arise. He's so damn slow. He gets the surge though by coming with me and Leon. He should be able to blink away as well, and a 2 for 2 in the end, I mean, it started really good for TCN, but suddenly, man, that Ravage onto 4 heroes, so damn good. Yep, I also like the fact that he didn't blink in and Ravage, just in case there's a, like an instant reaction with the Orchid or something, but yeah, the way he did it was nice, going in the rush pit, and then pretty much from downtown, and I hate to say it because I don't want to sound like Icy, but yeah, this one actually came from downtown. From the rush pit, the Ravage was still enough in range, caught four people, so they pretty much made up for what they lost in the mid there. Of course, this was really unfortunate, the Mirana going down as well as the Sand King, but they get the revenge kills. Also, in value, quite the same. I also like what Keanu did, he actually timed his raw pretty nicely, like he got that raw up on three people, and he didn't use it on Sizo, that would have been super greedy and also not worth it. Getting the kill on Sizo here, Train Protector, and not having the raw for the Nakes, that would have been kind of not worth it and maybe even turn out to be a disaster but yeah this one was really well played yeah and to be honest the mana burn from the necro free up onto freezer so that he couldn't infest or rage or anything it would, he just ran out of mana like in a matter of two seconds or and so. look talking about infest like arise is scouting and behind him is leon and he got a nice load there look at it there is those Chloe 2 things, they are not precious Disco Lights, no, they are actually a life stealer waiting to kill someone. The only question is, do they find someone? Next, pretty much, yeah, they got pretty much the same idea, but it is only a free man smoke. It would be a free on free, maybe a fast rotation in by one of those guys here in the jungle. So, let's see what happens here. Yeah, Moonlight the Shadow. The, the Moonlight Shadow definitely gives them the advantage and arise. He doesn't TP out there, Pacquiano. There's the White Axe. Will he pop the Necro? Yes, he does. They see Arise. There's the Roar popped and the Rise starts up as well. A few right clicks. And what a scouting vision that was. Yep, really absolutely. Well and no. actually, Red Light, he almost has a Manta style finish now. Or is it flying out to him? Yes, it is. Wow. This Mirana, I mean, usually Miranas don't get as much farm, don't get into the carry roll, but this one certainly is. Yep, absolutely. Beautiful play. To be honest, I think they could have there but then again it was too risky getting freezer out as well as leon and just sacrificing the invoker maybe the best choice and now tcn they don't want to go for like a direct fight they rather trade and as a trade it definitely looks like only problem is next is so much faster so much ahead like also now here in in the split push the tier two is already down while they just start to work on a tier two now we see a smoke and well, Titan is visible, the rest is smoked up. The question is, do they find someone here on the way back? Sisu now, he's farming here in the enemy jungle, and that might be a bad idea. Sisu, Sisu, you don't want to be there. Sisu, arrow, oh my god, he saw that arrow now. Yeah. Instant nature skies. Oh, they actually missed on the burst. Nice silence. There's the work of Deafening Blast. There. They need the Chaos Meteor, the bottom, of course. No Exor. They do keep take care of Illusion, but there's the Primal Roar on the rise. Nice Dream Quill onto the Red Eyes. He's so low. He's silenced up. No leap for him. This is actually a good fight for TC. They lose Sizo, but they will get Keanu. A few more right clicks. That's all they need. A Freezer. He should be fast enough. Or will it? The Necrobox actually block in himself in. Sinashi, he wants to go for one. He has Five to seconds rage. Age. Five seconds rage. Oh god, it does it just before the race and the right clicks are coming in District 12, just helping out with a few right clicks and that was so damn close but they 4 for 3 in the end and somehow, next please, they still won the fight ever so slightly. Yeah, and here I see in the side Illusionist raising his fist, they were happy about this fight, they were absolutely happy about this fight, super played. Like in the mid of this fight it actually looked like TCN turning it all around and like I don't know, especially the initiation, it looked so bad for next please, because the arrow didn't hit, the burst strike didn't hit, they had to, I don't know, put so many resources in, like, keeping up with that fight, and then the overgrowth, deafening blast on, like, three people, the dream guy on top of it, so much damage coming out, that was crazy, nice turnaround by TCN, but in the end, it was just not enough, so next please, again, coming out on top of it, even though the trades are getting more and more equal, I have to say, it's 
I mean, still 25-12, but TCN finds a way back in the game. And saying that, they're going to show crafts as well, mm -hmm. using that time. We have now 5,000 experience lead for next, please. And in gold, well, 4,000. So they work their way up again. But it's pretty much also the lead they almost had about 15 minutes ago. So when it comes to farming, TCN is still doing fine. And considering 30 minutes, Mark, this is not a crazy lead uh, next, please, has. So this game is open for any result, pretty much. Yeah, and the last fight, to be honest, they didn't have the vacuum wall either from the dark share. If they had that, I think they would have won the team by pretty damn easy, to be honest. But now, come with me, he has a PKB as well. No Ravage or anything will stop him except the Primal Roar, but the Primal Roar usually is safe for either the Invoker or the Lifestealer. But they're just going for the push, they don't care about it, the right. He is just forced us in. Tornado EMP, but they want to go in the right. Might be trouble. There's the EMP set up on to three heroes coming with me. Nice vacuum all the one to three with his PKB activated. The defense class was the last thing the invoker did though as he falls. And now looks like next piece is out in the freezer. He's trying to man fight, but he's up against four damn heroes here. He gets first strike up as well in the background. They're somehow still alive, somehow fighting them around, but Leon, he can't escape the tier 12, the ion shell on the creep, it's not enough. Oh god. He has six urn charges as well. They will just heal themselves up and maybe even try to get some cheap damage on the tier freeze. Yep, this is really unfortunate. It looked so good by TCN, but in the end it was just not enough to get the kills up. And you already mentioned it before, but those Necro mana burns on the Lifestealer, it's, it's actually pretty sick because he had his spells back up. He could have used them, he could have raged, he could have gone for another open wounds, but just no mana, absolutely no mana. And even even the wall on like three, four people and someone even re-entering the wall, just not enough damage. The biggest problem is really for TCN, the damage. Damage just not enough. I mean, look at it. Like, look at the farm, look at the items, like right click wise, there's not much coming up. That's, that's the biggest problem for them. Like, they really need a lot more farm on on Freezer here. I wish yeah. we would see maybe even a Dagon on the puck and I'm saying this not, not oh my god this arrow this oh was five my seconds. Oh my god arise. So unfortunate or rather nice arrow as well just scouting and that's the thing with the Mirana just keep throwing them out and eventually you will find the targets and now actually there's no buyback either on the invoker so tier three. Oh, are they going for Roche instead it sure looks like it it sure looks like it but no actually they rotate now top yeah, oh, and that's a ravage. ravage freezer. You were talking about him getting the farm. Nope, doesn't look like next please wanted to give it to him. Yep, absolutely. And this also means tower denied. Freezer down and Roshan being done at the same time. But there's orb scouting. They see red light here. Yeah, there's a nice silence by Leon to stop the primal roar. Oh, they find Ciso though. There's the perros that are coming out and Ciso. Wrong place, wrong time, buddy. Yep. Now it's looking grim. TCN just trying to be everywhere on the map, trying a split push that fails. They try to interrupt Roshan that fails. Sisu trying to scout out a bit, but he's <laughs> getting scouted out as well and just dying there. They just lose heroes right and left at the moment. I kind of lose hope, but then again, if I look at the farm and everything, it's it's really all about Freezer. Freezer being here, the third last pretty much in net worth. This is the biggest, that's the biggest problem. Yeah, it's definitely not what they planned, but it really comes down to just the start of the laning phase for him already. He just didn't get any place to get his early farm with. They haven't invested into Leon once again, but this is just more time that the life there doesn't spend farming. It's like, I don't really understand why or... I, mean, I understand that they need to get the pickoffs, but they're just giving time for next place to get the items like PKB on red light as well as PKB finished up. Oh, on the look at this. They want to go for a sneaker Roshan, but that arrow, the arrow is scouting it. They see it. And with that blink dagger, oh my god, this might be it. just a horrible, horrible move. Yeah, they don't have the Ravage, but still they will take the fight. And Shiraji, he blinks into the Roshan. They have vision, they have the gem on this. A nice sword, but there's the vacuum. Actually, only catches one. Deferring Blast is there, but Keanu PKB activated. Oh god, Overgrowth stolen into the epicenter from the sanking. They do so much damage. Freezer already down. Going for Leon, he uses the patient red light. Actually, he's pretty damn low. Come with me. Ion Shell, he is enough. Come with me. Gets the kill, making something happen. But Burrow Strike onto Rise. They have enough damage. Rise. Yo, he just melts down. 4 for 1. Shortly killed off Red Light, but GG called by DC. And next, please.
against all the odds, take game number one. Wow, TCN actually giving that game away to next please. This was nice. Like next please, as I said, farming wise to go. It looked still decent for TCN, but fighting wise, TCN is hot today absolutely on fire. Wow, I have to say it. Next, please. Like, thump up from me here. Like, also, they look here from the side when I look at them, they look, yeah, satisfied. They get ready for the second draft. The whole thing is a best of three, guys. So hang in there. Game two will come again. And let's see. I'm pretty sure TCN. They will make a stand and get the second game for themselves because they don't want to leave this main stage as a loser. That I'm pretty certain of. Either way, a bit music, some ads, and game two will come in just a